Print Extreme, makers of quality vinyl decals. Many decals available on their eBay store. If you cannot find what you need, send them a message and I'm sure they will be happy to help you and even make your decal custom. Visit their eBay store to see for yourself. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and today we are looking at this TriStar 777 120 channel um, sideband CB radio. Now it was bought as faulty. I've no idea what the fault is. So let's have a look, see if we can find it. So looks like the radio's had a bit of a hard life. The cabinet's a bit bit tatty, looks like it's been resprayed. Now one thing the seller did say is that it did have a, a UKE prom in it but has been removed. So whether it's been removed correctly is another thing. But looking at the circuit board side, yeah, I don't know what this is all about. We'll have to check on the schematic for this. And yeah, everything else around the area looks okay. Then we've got a PTBM 125A4X board with a strange hole next to it. So let's have a look at the component side. And at a first glance, everything looks okay there. Nothing amiss, nothing missing. Everything seems to be in its correct place. So we'll just put some tape over the band switch. We'll have to have a look what that's all about. And there's our outputs. 2166 and a 1307. No problem with that. So I suppose we should turn it on and find out what happens and see whether it's actually faulty or not. So we've got it on transmit on the frequency counter. And this is all it does. Just sits on one frequency. So as the binary to the PLL messed up. Not sure. So let's have a look at the VCO voltage. See where that is. And yeah, that's not right. So could it be as simple as a misadjusted VCO? So let's adjust it and find out. And it's not going anywhere. So have we got a PLL fault? Have we got a VCO fault? Is the binary wrong going into the PLL? I definitely can't get anything out of this VCO and it definitely will not go into a known lock voltage. So, okay, let's do some basic checks. Five volts on the PLL. And we'll check the um, binary inputs from the channel select, make sure they're correct. With it being channel one, they should all be high. Which they are. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with the programming. So why is it out of lock? What's our problem? So everything seems to check out on the PLL. We have voltages, we have inputs. I suppose we should check the 10240. Yeah, 10240 is near enough. 
so that rules out any problems with that. So what is our problem? Let's want to have another another um, adjustment of the VCO. And still nothing. So I suppose we should check the VCO voltage. Make sure that it's actually got voltage going to it. So we'll do that now. And we've got 5 volts going in. Okay, that shouldn't be a problem. So I replace the VCO with one of my standard VCOs. And surprise, surprise, it springs to life. So it looks like the VCO was at fault. Now there's one strange thing, the VCO actually looked like it had been desoldered. So somebody put a dodgy VCO in and sold it to me. Well, we'll never know. But anyway, we're getting somewhere now. So let's have a look on the counter. See what it's doing. And there's our low band. There's our mid band. There's our high band. A little bit off. But it's now working. So, we're definitely on the road to recovery with this. Yep, yeah, happy everything's working. Happy everything's working as it should be. So yeah, a dodgy VCO. Seem to be getting quite a collection of these. So I'm just going to mark it with a with a sharpie. Just so I don't accidentally use it. Now the next thing I noticed was this. The actual squelch control was falling off and it was a bit clunky. So we need to have a look at that. So the actual volume and power off works, it's just the squelch side of it. So I suppose we need to strip this pot down and have a look. So I've undone the retainers, just trying to get off this top part and I can already see that the two metal retainers that should be in this part of it. One side is actually broken off and it's there. So that's why that's flapping about in the breeze. So whilst we're in there we'll give this a clean because it'd be stupid not to. So a little bit of contact cleaner, wipe it round on the contacts. Get that nice and clean. Now we can work on repairing that broken control. So what I've actually done is I've actually filed down the two parts where the metal was supposed to be bent over. I've actually filed it down so those bits of metal that are left can actually just about grab onto it and dropped a little bit of super glue on and it's working nicely and it's not pulling off I wouldn't like to put too much pressure on it because it will give but for the moment it's not hanging off so that's another problem solved Anyway, that's it for part one of this TriStar 777. Don't forget to tune in for part two, where we put five bands on this and do some alignment and deal with this um, dodgy um, fascia. So anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, join Patreon, and we'll see you in the next episode.